What's going on guys? God bless you. Carlos here with Serrano's Mobile Detail in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I'm very excited because today uh, we're going to be doing some maintenance on my uh, generator because boy it needs it. But in today's video guys we are going to be talking about five things that you as a beginner detailer or even a seasoned detailer should never do or not do. So let's get started. Ow. Ow. Oh. Ow. Ay, wait. All right, before we start with tip number one a lot of you guys usually ask hey carlos what generator are you using to pull all your equipment all right um i'm a huge fan of the predator brand right um but in that time um they did not have a 5000 watt um so uh, i ended up purchasing this max speeding rod uh inverter generator um this one pulls i believe 5000 watts um or I think it's like 6,200 watts starting and then like 5,000 watts like peak or however that works. But um, this one is literally about two years old. Um, I will be very honest. When I purchased this, I really didn't know if this was a good purchase. Um, but uh, it has done really, really good uh, because as you guys have seen in a lot of my videos, it pulls this extractor, a, a double plug with heating you know well over 3000 watts probably just in this alone it's able to push my air compressor as well my um my pressure washer my vacuum my blower obviously these are all done in separate um occasions right i i got to learn really um how this machine likes to be used what i can use what i can't use and it's done really really well i'm a detailer who loves to have everything connected and ready to go everything on if i'm going to be using my steamer then my air compressor is on right i'm able to use all at once i can use air compressor i can use my chief steamer and my vacuum all at once um, and it holds its power really, really good. So for that scenario, I love it, right? Once I have to do any sort of extraction, right? That is when most of these items are off and we strictly run the extractor because once that heat kicks in, that is when a lot of the watts are getting pulled. But this thing has done really well, right? And it needs its maintenance. It's been a while. You guys are probably gonna be like, whoa. Um, yeah, I have been neglecting this sucker a bit um you know i've been busy um and this month has been pretty slow for me and i'm very honest it's been slow right um so these are the days where you know though they are slow i kind of see them as a gift because it's like bro you need to take care of some stuff and that is exactly what we're doing today is we're taking care of this generator um the gener uh, this generator or this inverter it's uh the oil is uh 10w30 um and it's very easy to um to do right um which is all right here but anyways let me get the other stuff and uh, we'll start with tip number one tip number one and i see this happen a lot in a lot of detailers post especially i think in the beginning stages of their business but tip number one is never guarantee anything let me repeat that again never guarantee anything what do you mean by that carlos if, especially if you are new to detailing you never want to guarantee anything to your customers meaning you're not going to tell them you know uh don't, don't use the words i guarantee it's going to look good or your money back i've seen some posts like that too i'm like what why are you going to give your customers their money back right um but it has happened let me let me rearrange this but <clears throat> but yes never guarantee anything 
to your customers because that can get you in some major major trouble all right let's continue to tip number two and my preferred oil that i like to use on my uh, inverter or my generator is by castrol they're high mileage um because it helps extend my vehicle's life <laughs> anyways um tip number two is never take on a job that you can't finish and I think that's a big one um, that we as detailers also see um, is a lot of the detailers taking on these jobs, right? Um, and unfortunately, they can't finish. One, it could be because the knowledge isn't there. Uh, two, they overpromise on the project, right? Um, and now they can't get out of that, that small, um, oof, that's a lot. Keep staying there. And get my towel but we as detailers sometimes think we can tackle a job and we really can't right um when it's it's too late right you can't you, you it's one of those things and i'm sure you guys can relate to that but some of some of you guys i know i can relate because in my past i was taking on jobs just because i needed the money but i wasn't really sure what i was doing if that makes sense um and you can see the quality wasn't like all there all right tip number three uh i'm running my generator really quickly just to kind of get it uh get the oil going and all of that so i do apologize if it's a bit too loud um, but tip number three is one that i see a lot of detailers also make uh, but they usually make it in the beginning stages of their detailing business right because they don't have organization they don't have the tools or they haven't really found their rhythm but I hope this one makes sense when you're slow right um, a lot of us <coughs> tend to um, you know reach out to our customers no <laughs> tip number three and i hope you guys can hear me i have my uh, generator running right now just to kind of get the oil moving and running around the uh, system but <laughs> tip number three and i hope you guys can hear me guys i do apologize i'm running my inverter right now um it's on eco mode so that's why it's a little bit more quieter um but tip number three is one that i i did it i know in the beginning stages of my business and i hope you would never have this issue as well but tip number three is don't stress over a slow day or a slow week and over book what do you mean carlos right what i mean by that is for example you are having a very rough week right and you're wanting to get some customers through your phone right or you want to book something do not do not send a massive text or email or whatever the case may be right i'm old school so i really text mostly um but don't send a massive text <coughs> to your previous client saying hey i have tomorrow at 9 a.m available for you right because this is what's gonna happen right you send this massive text and maybe within seconds within maybe an hour or so you'll start getting those clients say yes please i want it i'll take it right now what are you gonna do because you just sent a massive text to a bunch of clients and you thought maybe you were only gonna get maybe like one reply now you have five customers saying yes please book me for 9 a.m what are you gonna do now you're gonna tell that customer oh i'm sorry um that already got booked today right like yeah you can say that but in a way when you're sending a message like that is you're really kind of putting them in in place to say hey i have time for you now you don't have that time for them to where it just i know from 
maybe some customer standpoint some people won't like that right some will be like oh okay what do you have available right but try not to ever send a massive text to your client because I, I did that once and boy that was that was not good um, at that point I literally was kind of rushing through my details in the beginning stages of my business and that is something I hate I would never do I never want to rush my my quality because now I have to get to those other customers right so when you're slow maybe do um, two two messages to some clients of, of your past right and say uh, hey you know I have tomorrow available um, you know if, if it's something that you would like please let me know right um, or you can say I do have other uh, customers uh, that would be interested but I thought you know uh, you I thought of you and you know want to give you div first right something like that um, to where it gives you that slot to where oh if you messed up then you're able to fix that mistake really really quick right um, or try to the way I do it now is when I'm slow I'll send those messages but I'll send one message to a customer I'll usually wait an hour if I don't hear back from them I will go to the next customer in line that I have haven't seen in a while right um, if they don't answer and then just kind of every hour just I give my I give those customers at least a one hour window so they can respond right um, that way you don't go crazy with the scheduling right and then if one of them books oh awesome right now you look to your next slot right to where okay let me send this message to other customers hey I have 12 p.m. available right wait another hour right no answer hit somebody else right that way you don't overbook right and you keep your schedule just perfect your quality won't decrease you know you're gonna give the best out of you for that for that customer tip number four I think I don't even know where we're at now <laughs> but tip number four number four if you're planning on starting your business, right? And you can definitely correct me if I'm wrong for the seasoned detailers, for those who have been in this for a long time. But tip number four, please, don't go out and spend a ton of money on equipment. Start with what you have. Start with whatever you can find within your household, to be honest right um, you don't need to go out and buy all these fancy tools you see on YouTube on TikTok, on Instagram um, don't go buying the baddest extractors out there like this mighty right this is a mighty 1001 uh, DX 200 uh, when I purchased this extractor six years ago I paid 2500 for this extractor that was many years ago right um, since then I'm sure they've upgraded them and gotten better um, but I thought I needed to have this bad big extractor right because again coming from the car wash this is the extractor I knew this is the extractor we use in Mar in the car wash right so I was like oh I need that when I when I quit my job I was like I need that right Fast forward to now, many years later, I can honestly tell you, like, <laughs> I don't need that big extractor. I love it. I love it because I can put 50 foot hose if I have to, or a hundred foot hose, and my suction is gonna be there like no tomorrow, right? But don't go out there and spend thousands of dollars on equipment, right? The beginning stages of your business start small, get a, a, a bucket right I'm sure you have a bucket around your house that you can use you can use your mop bucket or something right um, and 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 start like that right but don't go out and spend a ton of money on products on tools on equipment because it's gonna get you in some major major debt right the beginning stages of your business is truly keep your debt as tight as possible as minimal as possible because god forbid you put all this on a credit card and your business is not doing good now you can make that 50 dollars monthly payment or that even 25 dollars monthly payment with your credit card with 
interest if i may add um or you can make a payment on the air compressor that you bought or on on this whole setup right you went and got your whole transit you know with the whole rack system and all of that now you're <laughs> no don't do it so tip number four is start with what you have right don't worry about what your other detailing friend is gonna say oh you don't have this you don't have i don't give a crap what they think start small right and then as you're progressing in your business you're like oh i have extra money okay cool let me buy this let me buy that right you've seen my channel i started with a harbor freight steamer and i loved it and i still do that would be my go-to if i have to right um but um going from the harbor freight and then i started upgrading to different steamers why because i was starting to progress in my business i was making a little bit more money and i could say oh you know what i could buy this one right to where we are now the chief steamer right um but if i could do it all over again yeah i would probably not have bought that extractor um, but start small start small with what you have and have your business grow with what you have and then later you can say all right cool i can start buying this i can buy it because now you're making the finances to cover all these things And to conclude this video, tip number five, number five, which I think is actually a really important one as well as a detailer is, tip number five is don't ever, um, don't overbook your appointments. When you're starting to your business, or in, and even maybe a year after, you're still in the learning phase of how quickly you can work, uh, how efficient you are, um, you know, how long does a particular package take you, right? So you're still in those learning stages. So tip number five is don't overbook your appointments, right? Because now you're going to run into an issue where now you have that next appointment waiting because you, you told them you'll be there at 10 and it's already 12 and you're still not there, right? And that customer is like, Dane, is he coming? Right. And then they call you and then you're, you, you'll you probably be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. I, I just got stuck with this car. Um, you know, um, it took me a little bit longer. Right. And then some customers will be like, oh, OK, well, you know what? Never mind. Uh, let me just cancel because I, I really needed to be somewhere. And you told me at a certain time. Right. So don't over book your appointments. Learning your craft comes into play into this. Right. As Especially for those that are in the interior field such as myself <laughs> learning your craft in the interior field is very important because you have to know what you're getting into before you even attack the problem meaning do your homework when you're talking to these customers that are inboxing you for a interior detail right ask for pictures ask questions all of that so you have that knowledge and you know okay it's gonna take me this long to get this project done right so therefore i usually book my next appointment usually um about at a two hour window so if i have an appointment at nine i know i can get my interiors done within two hours to three hours max so usually i'll say uh, 10 11 my next appointment is going to be at 1 p.m <laughs> right because that gives me that little cushion that i need in case if this car is already bad i have that one hour kind of window to where i know i will finish these vehicles in a timely manner time is very important for me but most importantly is for my customers right because i want to make sure that when i say ma'am it's going to take me two and a half hours i'll have that vehicle done within two hours for sure and that'll give me that extra half hour to just do final touches or whatever and give me time to get to that next customer right i remember when i started my business um i did not know what the heck i was doing and i was literally just overbooking like oh yeah i got you um does, does 10 a.m sound good and they're like oh yeah and then i would forget that i had already a 10 a.m appointment so now it was like i would kind of rush projects because like shoot you know um i have to get to that next appointment right um and I'll never forget when I sent a project to another detailer um, and that detailer was like, hey, man, I don't want to be rude, but you, you need to control your schedule a little bit better. Like it looks like you're just rushing or you're running. Right. And I was like, yeah, man, I, I overbooked. I didn't I forgot about this client. Right. So since then, I learned a lot of my time management. I learned my craft. I really like 
this is a field that I know I'm good at. And I know that when I see a car, I can tell it. I can see it from the pictures and say, okay, cool. It's going to take me three hours. And I guarantee you, I'll have that thing done within two hours to two and a half hours. And I'm good, right? Timing is very important. So uh, this last tip is really don't overbook your appointments. Uh, and how do you do that? We are living in the era of technology. There's apps for that. There's your, your Square all of that right for me i'm still old school i use my phone i take a screenshot of a calendar circle dates i have open right and then once they book i'll put it in my in my phone um and stuff like that right i oh that's kind of what i do to not overbook is kind of i'm more consistent now with using my phone um <coughs> your phone is your best friend right phones now have been have been so advanced in that area that you can literally use your phone for everything right i edit my i edit my videos on my phone but if when it comes to scheduling use your phone right if you have an app i guess send them that app and they can book there and all of that right but um i'm still old school but tip number five don't overbook your appointments right again guys thank you so much for joining me today's video i hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of five tips to get your business going as always i do appreciate your uh support your love um you know um and as always god bless you guys oh before i forget giveaway is going to be tomorrow at 8 p.m central standard time congratulations to all the entries you have been entered and you're wondering like man did i do it I double checked everything. Some people missed one hashtag um, or you created your own hashtag, um, but everything has been checked and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time with a giveaway. Also, if you're going to have if you want to have questions for me um, on that live. Hey, let's do it. Right. We'll take a good 30 minutes of, uh, of our time and uh, have have a detailed talk. So I will see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.